Today we are playing Pokemon New Generations. This game takes place in the Kanto region set years in the future with all of the routes being completely changed. You can catch wild starter Pokemon such as Bulbasaur and all of the gym leaders that you know and love have retired and are now trainers in their very own gyms. Let's get into it. So, starting things off, we are in our bedroom, just like the original game. I decide to go and get my potion because it's very useful, and then we head up to Route 1, and as you can already see, the grass cutter has been because the grass is just nowhere near as much as it used to be. I then go into Professor Oak's lab, and the three starts Pokemon have completely changed. We have Sentret, Rattata, and then we also have, as our final option, Zigzagoon. So, three normal type Pokemon, not really the greatest starters to choose from. I decide to go with Rattata just because I'm playing a Kanto game, I'm May as well go with the Kanto starter Pokemon. I then take on Blue and he absolutely destroys me with his Sentra and Quick Attack. It does so much damage. We then start venturing into Pallet Town and as you can see it's already changed. We can't actually go down into Cinnabar. And there are also these black spots that are obviously present in the usual Fire Red and Leaf Green games. But most of the time they hold Nuggets which are very very useful. We then head up to Route 1. We find the Pokemark Clerk who gives us a potion. And as you can see Route 1 is also completely different. You can find different Pokemon as well well because these Pokemon have decided to make Kanto their home now and so you can just find a bunch of different Pokemon in the first route. I also find another Nugget on this black spot. You will see how kind of important money is later on in the game. We then head up to Viridian City. As you can see, there is now grass in Viridian City. There is a guy literally walking on water. You can't speak to him. He's just there chilling on the water. I have no idea what's going on. I then head into the Pokemart to get the parcel. This game is really, really cool, but it still uses certain features from the original Fire Red and Leaf Green game, such as having to get the parcel and stuff. We then go back to Professor Oak. We give him the parcel. He gives us the Pokeball. He gives us the Pokedex. Tells us about completing the Pokedex. Tells us it was his dream and that we need to complete it. And then Blue pops out. We then head into the Pokemon Center. And I just basically catch everything on Route 1, which is Rattata, Zigzagoon, Wurmple, Puchiena, and Sentret. I thought that my team was kind of alright, but not balanced type-wise uh, at all. So we then uh, go to the, the Pokemart because we actually can buy a bunch of different items now. You can buy the Amulet Coin for 5,000. You can buy Level Candy, which is obviously rare candies. And then you can buy Pokeballs and Potions. I decided to buy 15 Pokeballs because I'm running low after catching all of the Mons on Route 1. And then after that, I also decide to sell some Nuggets so I can buy some Level Candy and the Amulet Coin. And again... I just want to reiterate, money in this game is so, so important. This is a very, very difficult Pokemon ROM hack, by the way. I don't know if I made that clear, but yeah, this is very, very difficult. So I buy a bunch of level candy. I've got no money in the bank. We then head over to the left and find Blue, who leads with a Hoot Hoot, which I don't really have anything for to be for. It's level 9. As well as that, certain moves do damage in this game, such as uh, Growl and Leer and Sand Attack. It actually does damage as well as the additional kind of... Uh, effects such as lowering your accuracy or lowering the defense or anything like that. Anyway, we do defeat Blue somehow with my team of normal type Pokemon. And I then come under the conclusion that you don't get experience points for defeating Pokemon in this game. The only way to level up is with the level candy, which obviously costs 500, which obviously isn't super expensive. But at the same time, it does add up. I also catch a Bulbasaur as well um, and a Chikorita. So they are both in my team because I know that hopefully... The, the rock type gym is still rock in this game, so I'm going to need some grass type Pokemon. So yeah, the fact that you can't actually level up from catching Pokemon or defeating Pokemon or defeating wild Pokemon or trainers Pokemon or anything like that makes this game very, very difficult. So you're super reliant on money and the only way to get money in this game is by beating trainers and obviously selling items such as nuggets and stuff that you find on the ground. I then level up Wormpool to level 9 and it doesn't evolve and I'm a little bit worried now that... Maybe evolutions also are not in this game because Wurmple is now level 10. It should be a bloody Beautifly right now or a Dustox and it is not. So I decided to stop wasting my rare candies on the Wurmple and get Bulbasaur and Chikorita up to level 14. These are the only two Pokemon that I'm really going to be training up just because I'm hoping that I've got something good for uh, Brock's new gym leader. I then catch a Wingle and also going to here it says pick one inside. So this is a brand new building in this game and we are greeted by the actual creator of the ROM hack saying that one of these uh, boxes contains a starter Pokemon. Well, all of the boxes contain starter Pokemon. We're allowed to choose one of them up to Generation 3. So as Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3, all the starters. And first, I have to defeat him and his strongest level 100 legendary in order to get this uh, starter Pokemon. So I'm already like, 
Oh god, wait, wait, what, what do you mean I have to fight a level 100? At least with a bloody Mewtwo, level 100. I've got my Bulbasaur out here, level 14. I'm very, very scared. I go for the Leech Seed, but luckily he goes for the Memento. So it was just kind of like a joke battle. Of course, you don't get any experience points for the Mewtwo. So I understand why he kind of put it in there. But anyway, we defeat the, the creator of the ROM hack. Gives us four grand for winning, which is very, very useful. And now after that, we can choose one of the starters. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you which one's which. And so I just went and clicked on the first one and I just received Squirtle. At this point, I actually wanted to get Torchic just because I'd have a fire type Pokemon there. I already have the Wingle for water and I have my Bulbasaur and Chikorita for grass. But I had to just kind of take Squirtle, which was really annoying. We then head off into Viridian Forest. And of course, Viridian Forest is completely different as well. And there are trainers in this forest that have ridiculous teams. Like the level jump in this game is absolutely absurd but again it just makes the game difficult this bug catcher has got six pokemon and he leads with a level 15 butterfree and like i'm just kind of putting into perspective how much this level jump is like he has six pokemon that are at least level 15 all fully evolved bug type pokemon and i can't even evolve any of my pokemon so i'm just kind of stuck here getting destroyed by this butterfree luckily this thing actually can't hit puchiana because it only has confusion as an attacking move and so uh, it's just like sleep powdering and poison powdering me and supersonicing me so yeah puchiana can actually get through this battle uh not relatively easily but it should be a battle that he wins. I'm just constantly getting put to sleep. Then comes out with an Ariados level 17. And again, like I say, this is just his second Pokemon. His team is absolutely ridiculous. Go for the quick attack. Obviously destroys my Sentret. I'm not surviving that. And then I have two Grass types left that are obviously not going to have a great time against Bug types. He takes out my Chikorita. I go into Squirtle. Squirtle gets the Tail Whip off. As you can see, it does actually do damage. And then Squirtle dies. And I go into Bulbasaur and just try and get a Leech Seed off or something. I do take out the Ariados. But then he comes out with the Beautifly. Has Gust. Destroys me. I then head off back. Back to the Pokemon and buy some more level up candy and start kind of just grinding up my team a bit more because I'm super, super under leveled for this battle. Trying to learn poison powder, stuff like that. As you can see, Growl, 5 out of 5 PP, 10 power, 100 accuracy. And yeah, it has types as well. So I guess that Dark would, I'm guessing, be resisted and stuff by like fighting or something like that. I'm not actually too sure. I don't think I actually went up against a fighting type in this game. Uh, but anyway, I'm leveling up candy my whole team because I just need the XP. I get it up on Chikorita. I get it up on Bulbasaur. And I, I don't really want to waste level up candy on the likes of Sentra and Puchiana because I'm not really going to be keeping them for that long. And that's another reason why I don't level up Squirtle as well. I decided to level up my Wingle because it is a flying type. It learns Wing Attack as well, which is very, very useful. So now my team is a little bit better. And anyway, after that, we finally... It took me like five tries to beat this guy, but we finally beat him. As you can see, my level up candy is up to 19 now as well because I had to just keep leveling up. But we finally beat this bug catcher who was ridiculous. And after that, I head up to Route 2 and then into Pewter City. So we finally make it into the first gym leader town. And as you can see, Brock is here. He's no longer the gym leader. He is retired from the gym leader. He says, hello, challenger. Welcome to Pewter City's gym. I'm Brock. You know, we're getting old, so we're leaving the space for the new generation. All the gym leaders from Hoenn have come to check this change too and are open to challenge you too, but they might get bored if they see you beat the leader first. By the way, let's fight. I want to see how I am still. So basically, you can fight the Kanto gym leaders and the Hoenn gym leaders in each of the gyms. So anyway, Leader Brock sends out Geodude. It's level 18. I'm not really too worried about this because I do have two grass types. And I have Wingle as well with Water Gun. And uh, so I go into Bulbasaur. It does a lot of damage, but I kill it with Vine Whip. And then it comes in with Onyx. Dragon Breaths me, destroys me. I go for a Razor Leaf and it isn't super effective. So Onyx is actually a different type in this game. As you can see, my moves are just doing no damage to this. Water and Grass is just neutral damage. So I don't know why, unless it has like some certain ability or something. But yeah, this Onyx absolutely destroys me. So I then go into the, uh, the Pokemart, buy some more level up candy. I uh, can also buy the different berries now. Silk Scarf for 9,999. Antidotes, Awakenings, Auron Berries are 200. Auron Berries are quite expensive to be fair. Just for 10 HP, it's not really worth the 200 Poke Dollars. And Escape Ropes and Repels are also here as well. So I need to buy some more level up candy because I'm just going to get absolutely destroyed by Brock. Luckily, I have three Nuggets to sell, which is another 15k. And that is a lot of level up candy. So I decided to just buy 30 of them uh, because I need the levels. I'm getting destroyed by Brock. I then also catch a Torchic as well in Pewter City and I decide to level that up all the way up to uh, to 20 just to try and... I know that I'm not obviously going to have anything for Brock in, in terms of Torchic, but... 
you know, if for whatever reason it does learn double kick for some reason, then that would be obviously very, very useful. And then up to level 20 and it actually starts evolving. So I was very, very happy to see this. Evolutions are in the game. They are just at a later level. Because obviously Torchic usually evolves into Combuskin at level 16, but this time it's 20. Knowing that I was one level off on Bulbasaur and Chikorita was a little bit annoying, but now I know they can evolve is actually very, very useful. So Bulbasaur evolves into Ivysaur. I do the same thing for Chikorita and that evolves into Bayleaf. I then go back to Brock and it's time to defeat him. So obviously I can just destroy the Geodude, no problem at all. And then Onyx comes back in. I go into Bayleaf, get my Reflect up. I go for a Razor Leaf on this. As you can see, it's just doing no damage at all. Dragon Breath kills my Bayleaf. I then go into Ivysaur and get off a Leech Seed. And I also get off a Poison Powder as well. I'm not sure if it's because of the Sandstorm or something that it's not super effective. But either way, it's just doing like no damage. But luckily... The Leech Seed is really, really useful here, and it's just sapping that health from him. I then go for the Poison Powder. Brock goes for the Potion, which I was actually quite happy with, because now I'm doing the residual damage of Leech Seed and Poison Powder. Um, so yeah, this Onyx is not going to be surviving. So we do take out Brock, but obviously he's just a gym trainer here. He's not the actual gym leader. And so uh, after that, I go and heal, and then it's back to fight the actual gym leader, which is actually Joey, the guy who owns those shorts. He's on about his top-tier Rattatas. His Pokemon are perfect, so I'm guessing that means they're like I Ivy trained and Eevee trained or whatever and he's talking about short so now I have to fight Joey and uh, his lead was a little bit interesting so he's actually got them in master balls as well so he sends out the Rattata as you can see in the master ball it's level one so right now I'm thinking okay this has to be focus sash like endeavor Rattata or something like that just to destroy my team so I go into my Ivysaur and get off a leech seed just to kill off the focus sash goes for the quick attack though which obviously does like no damage to me so I go for the leech seed he goes for another quick attack we get the leech seed off again at this point I'm like okay it's probably not like focus sash endeavor or whatever that rat set is but anyway we do go for a razor leaf now and we do kill off the uh the rat so that's his first pokemon gone i'm like all right fair play that was actually relatively easy and then comes in with a, another Rattata. This time it is level uh, level 20 and another Master Ball. And this quick attack does like hella damage to me. So I'm like, okay, this must be like Bandit or something. There's no way that that would do that much damage against my Ivysaur. So I get a Leech Seed off, luckily. Um, after that, I try and get a Poison Powder off. But the quick attack does take out my Ivysaur. It doesn't creep me or anything, just does that much damage. I then go into my Bait Leaf because I do have Reflect and I want to grab that. And then also I can start growling at it and doing all that damage. And then eventually it just, it just dies because obviously it's not going to be able to kill me with... I think I have Synthesis at this point as well. So it, literally Bayleaf is not dying here. So I do get my Boulder Badge. We defeat the first Gym Leader of this new Kanto region set years into the future. And uh, after that... Obviously, just telling me that I can use Flash now. My Pokemon will obey me, whatever. I get four grand for winning. So, obviously, that is a lot of level up candy. And then he also gives me a Rock Tomb as well. So, all in all, I... I, I I kind of don't know why Joey is the gym leader and Brock isn't. Brock gave me a much harder time. I then go and see if this trainer's like Roxanne or something. Because obviously it was on about Hoenn gym leaders. And it actually is Roxanne. And she sends out a course. So obviously I've just lost my Ivysaur from the gym battle. But I go for some uh, Razor Leafs here. And we do just start destroying the uh, the Corsola. We survive on three. She actually has a nose pass left. I go for a Water Gun. Absolutely destroys my uh, my Pokemon here. And I'm, I'm in a really bad spot here. I do go for a Sand Attack, which obviously lowers the accuracy and does damage. So that's very, very useful. And then uh, after that, we go for the Ember and we do defeat Roxanne. After that, we head to the right. We get the Running Shoes. And yeah, this route is just completely changed. Like, this is honestly just like... Dude, so difficult. Like, I can't even express how difficult this game gets. The amount of times you have to go back to Pokemon Center is ridiculous. If there was no Pokemon Center in this game, it generally wouldn't be possible. Um, so as you can see, there's just a bunch of random trainers around. We find this bit here, which is like Baby Park or something. We have Magby here. We have Clefers, Iggly Buffs, stuff like that. Nothing really too crazy. They're only level 5 as well. At this point, if I find a level 5, I'm not going to be leveling up because it's just going to cost way too much level up candy and I just don't have the money for it. Uh, but as you can see, Masquerade here, just obviously not great at all. Just can destroy him with all its flying type moves and stuff like that. But uh, we do decide to nearly take out the Masquerade and then it switches out into the Ariados, doing more damage to me. Luckily, Leech Seed is like my best friend in this game because it is just doing so much residual damage, giving me health as well. Comes in with the Beedrill. I go for another Leech Seed. Obviously, I can't Poison Powder this Pokemon, but as long as I can get that Leech Seed damage off, that's the main thing. So we take out the Beedrill. Then Masquerade comes back in. I go for the Razor Leaf. We do take out the Masquerade. That's another trainer defeated. I try and find a wild Pokemon here, but there's nothing in there. And then I decide to just buy some more level up candy because obviously when you lose a battle, which happens a lot in this game, you also lose money. So it's kind of always, it's kind of best to always not have money. 
Um, I then decide to level up Wingle to 25, and it does actually evolve. And it wants to learn Water Pulse, and Water Pulse in this game is so cracked. I don't know why it does so much damage, but it's so, so good. I decide to get everyone else up to level 25 of the mons that I'm using, and it's time to kind of move over more to the right. And then we have these, like, double battles and stuff, which are even worse. Like, these double battles are just so, so stupid. Like... It's just ridiculous. Anyway, we take out this uh, this random trainer here. As you can see, Water Pool's doing so much damage. We have another double battle here. And she leads with a Giraffe Rig and a Wigglytuff. This isn't both trainers battling you, by the way. This is one person giving you a double battle. And then you have to fight the other person straight up, like straight away as well. So... It gives you no time to heal or anything like that. It is just constant Pokemon battling. You're just losing HP on your Mons. It, like I say, it's a really, really good difficult game. If you want a difficult Pokemon ROM hack, this is it. Anyway, we finally get through all the trainers and we make our way to uh, Mount Moon. I decide to buy the Magikarp just to see if it's anything else. Really wish I didn't buy the Magikarp. 500 Poke Dollars, that's a level up candy right there. But yeah, unfortunately, the Magikarp is just a level 5 and it's just trash. I mean, I could have evolved it to a Gyarados, but... Dude, 15 rare candies just for that is not great. We then find some more items here. Find another nugget. Again, absolute gold mine finding that. And then we head into Mount Moon, which is, of course, also changed. Uh, now, Mount Moon does have the Shuckle in here, which is really annoying because for whatever reason, they have Shadow Tag. And it's like, great, I have to kill all of those. I decide to try and find any new, like, decent mon. Anyway, we make our way through Mount Moon and come up to the Scientist, who obviously has the fossils. Uh, again, I would have showed Mount Moon, but it's literally just a bunch of trainers. It is like 80% of what this game is, just trying to like destroy these trainers and get to the next part of the game. And they're obviously stopping you. It's really difficult. Uh, this battle was actually really, really close though. Uh, he actually goes for the self-destruct, which kind of won me the battle. Like going to Bayleaf, I decide to uh, go for some growls just to try and, I guess, get that physical attack down. I go into Puchiena, get some more kind of growls and stuff off. And then I'm going to Squirtle. I do remember that I picked up a revive though. And I don't want to go all the way back to the Pokemon Center. So I need to win this battle because I'm like one battle away from making it to Cerulean. So I decide to revive my Combusken. Uh, I get some more Tail Whips off as well, which is very, very useful. I go Combusken. I go for a peck just because the amount of defense drops it had. And I actually do defeat the Gulp. And I take the Helix Fossil. Lord Helix obviously represent. Got to do it. And then I decide to pop an Antidote on uh, Combusken because I don't want to die from poison. I find another Antidote. And then I leave Mount Moon. And uh, we then find a Diglett on the left of Mount Moon, which is very useful. I decide to grind him all the way up to 28. He evolves into Dugtrio, which is obviously very, very useful. And now I have five good Mons in my team, and we are ready to take on uh, the next challenge. I go to the Pokemon. I can now buy Mystic Waters and Super Potions. Super Potions, very, very useful. I decide to buy some potions as well, just for some extra healing. And then this kid is, like, blocking the way I can't go up, which is, like, really annoying. He's talking about a slow bro that I can't get past. Um, and then I... Kind of jump over this ledge, and then it's just blue, and he has got level 30 knocked out. And I'm like, bro, like, what? Why? Why does he have that? I then go into um, my Combusken to try and take out the Sunflora, but it just absolutely destroys me. This Sunflora has Flame Wheel for whatever reason, so it just destroys all the grass types and. It's also in the sun as well. It's just destroy. I can't do anything for it. So I go for a wing attack, and we do manage to take out the Sunflora. Comes in with a Pineco, destroys me there. I go in with Dugtrio. Not really much I can do here. Get a few magnitudes off. It self destructs, and now I've only got a level five Squirtle left. So obviously I'm losing to Blue right now. I then find a Snow Run in the package, a patch of grass of um, Cerulean. So that's obviously going to be leveling up loads because I need something to take out that Noctile with. And so I get it all the way up to like level 28 or 30 or something. It doesn't evolve, unfortunately. Tries to learn some new moves, which is obviously very, very useful. But at this stage, like, you know, I, I've got no money left. I've got no rare candies left. And Blue has got, like, a really strong team. So we're not in a great situation. But anyway, as I say, I'm just kind of leveling up here. As you can see, Lear is a ghost type 5 PP. Straight back to Blue. I lead with my snow run. I get some icy winds off. And we do manage to take out uh, enough health of the Noctile where I can come with Combuskin. I thought a quick attack here would kill. It doesn't. I lose half my health, which isn't great. I also don't have double kick as well, which is really annoying. Anyway, before it comes in, I managed to take that out with Dugtrio. In comes the Sunflora. I know that I can only really wing attack this. Luckily, I destroy it easily this time. Then comes in with the Pineco. I decide to go back into Combuskin and get an Ember off. Gets the burn, which is very, very useful. We do take out Blue. Unfortunately, there's no way back because the little kid is blocking the route at the bottom. And then, obviously, I've jumped over a ledge to get here. So, it's kind of like you have to go up to Nugget Bridge. And Nugget Bridge is just its ridiculous. You've got two trainers every single time. Yeah, there's no way I'm winning that. So, I decide to just lose to uh, on purpose so then i can go to cerulean as you can see misty is here she is not the gym leader anymore she has retired that status and she is now one of the gym trainers so uh, she's on about how she's ex cerulean city gym leader let the battle begin she leads off with a level 27 polyrath i feel like i should have took misty on first before i went to nugget bridge because like my levels are a lot higher than misty's which obviously i'm happy about 
Anyway, we do take out the uh, the Starmie uh, in a minute anyway. Obviously, just destroying my team. But we, yeah, we do take out the Starmie, which is very useful. Then has the Tentacruel. And I'm a little bit worried here. I'm like, what do I have for this? And I'm like, oh, wait, I got a ground type. We do outspeed. We take out the uh, the Tentacruel. We get six grand. And we have a double battle as the gym leader. I also go over here and it's actually Brawly. But yeah, Brawly destroys me. Like, obviously, I've lost half my team to Misty anyway. So I was never going to win this battle regardless. But yeah, Brawly just absolutely puts me in my place. No way in hell I'm winning that fight. So after that, I go up to the gym leader. As you can see, it's a double battle. And uh, yeah, this is this is relatively difficult double battle because you've got one Pokemon always trying to put you to sleep and stuff. And then the other Pokemon's just kind of doing damage. So this is, yeah, not, not easy at all. So we have Diglett and Bellsprout here. So we've got uh, not, not a terrible lead for me at all. I do have Ivysaur and my um, Bayleaf. I go for a Razor Leaf and then I decide to go into my Pelipper as well just so I can get some uh, wing attacks off on the, um, the Bellsprout. But as you can see, I am now asleep with Pelipper. I think it's using Sleep Powder or something. I don't think it has Spore. I'm not sure, though, it could. And then they come out with a Steelix, which is also not great. I'm asleep with both my Pokemon. Like I say, this Bellsprout just keeps going for Sleep Powders. I probably should have took that out because that was the massive problem. I do get paralyzed on my Pelipper, which actually helped me out a little bit because now I can't get put to sleep. So I go for the Water Pulse on the Steelix. Um, but as you can see, their health just isn't really going down that much. I'm trying to get Leech Seeds off and stuff on the Steelix, but it's not really going to plan. I then go into my Dugtrio because I know I have Magnitude and it should hit both of them for a decent amount. Um, so yeah, Magnitude 7 kills the Bellsprout. Doesn't kill the Steelix though. And then they come in with a Cloister. Quite interesting. They've got the Steelix and the Cloister though. If you know, you know. But we do defeat the uh, we do defeat the, the Gym Leader. And then I decide to just kind of end the playthrough here. It is a really difficult game. And I think if you're into competitive Pokemon, it's a really cool game. Because it is just a really difficult ROM hack. But uh, yeah, it's got an added twist of being like set in the future. And the Gym Leaders aren't the Gym Leaders anymore and stuff like that. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like down below. Leave a comment with anything else you'd love to see me play. And until next time, have a great day and peace.